Bütün internet cevap. Sorma. Ne olmuş hasta? Zamazane. Czy nie, no niby czas działa. Znaczy niby nawet działa. Nie wiem, czy jest zamazane. Wyłączyło na przejawę tego tego. Hello, hello. I'm so sorry. We, I'm just having a little bit of a problem with the internet connection. So welcome. And let me just check if I can make it better. And I would love to know if you, if you can hear me and if you can see me. Hello, hello. <laughs> Good to see you. Just give me a chance, I will try to um, restart my ruler and then in the meantime, if you can share that stream on Facebook, in Finnever and Friends Open Studio, in your feed or somewhere else, that will be just more than perfect because this way more people will find us and also thumbs up because that is making the stream more visible so people can find us easily. Thank you. Okay, I think everything is fine. Sorry for that bit of the delay.
I shared already, but you know, we just copy and paste the link though, so that it's not too complicated. So, hello everyone. I'm just going to start in a moment. So we have a chance to look at the new metallic flakes. And this is, um, this is here because some of you were asking me on the groups how to deal with this kind of product, how to apply it, what you can do with that. And that means, <laughs> thank you very much for sharing. Thank you, thank you. And that means I'm here to give you a quick demo on how you can apply it and what else you can do on the top of that as well, because, you know, it's good to know what are the possibilities. So we're going to start in a moment. I can see the chat. Mm -hmm. I'll just say hello to everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome to my studio. It's great to see you here. I will just oh, take a step back. So I heard that uh, you are interested in the metallic flakes and you would like to know what to do with them. I'm here to help. It's good to see you all joining. It's great to be here with you. It's not going to be a very long stream, but I want to show you some of the possibilities and explain how the product is um, useful for mixed media product uh, projects and what you can do on the top and what do you need to apply it and how to do it. So uh, first of all, uh, I've got some samples which are done already. Uh, this is just one of the uh, resin elements done with the mold and I think this is very fun however it's a bit messy so you're going to see there are some options and uh, for people who like uh, more of this messy fun it's going to be really great <laughs> hello hello everybody please um, you know invite your friends give the link to your friends so they can watch of course this is going to be recorded and you can come back to that later and give me thumbs up so the uh, stream is going to be visible a little bit more. You can see the display in my studio just behind me. Uh, this is the wall <laughs> that I have. Hello, Miriam. Hello. And these are the projects which are mostly containing metallic uh, effect in it. So you would probably guess that sooner or later, I would love to include something ultra shiny in the uh, mixed media range. Hello, good to see you all. I'm glad you are joining. Please feel free to share this link on your social media, in on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. Invite more friends so we can all watch together. And uh, this is probably the most shiny effect you are able to get with using water-based products and some extra effects. Uh, of course, metallic paints are quite shiny, but if you're going to look at the foils, this is real metal flake. So it has this uh, natural look of the metal and it's very, very uh, thin. So all the details of whatever you are going to decorate are going to be visible. And um, of course, at the very beginning, the question is, do you like that look? Do you like to have it uh, that shiny? Because some of the people will say it's a bit too much. So I will also give you the tips. What can you do if you want just a tiny bit of the shine instead of having that all over the top? Because this is super easy and this is easy to customize. So, um, I hope this is going to be entertaining and I hope you're going to uh, see that they are really, really fun to use. So this is uh, another one I made in the meantime. This is the copper version. And of course we have selection of different flakes. There are three sets which are mul uh, multicolored sets and there are three uh, jars which are solid colors. So far we were able to get gold copper and silver and these are the jars that uh, they contain only that you will see that it's, it's 150 milliliters but in the weight it's almost nothing <laughs> uh, 
And then I made also some custom mixes, so they're really cool when they are mixed together. A sparkling set has a silver and gold inside. I hope you can see it. Uh, steampunk is a mixture of all the colors, gold, silver and copper. And then finally we have vintage, which is more uh, reddish in color. So this is uh, gold and copper together. And of course you can use them the way you like. Solid colors, they're going to give you nice full coverage, very, very big shine. With the mixes you can get crazy patterns like that and they really also look very uh, cool. So it all depends what you are going for and what you would like to get on the project. So now I think I will just flip the camera and I will show you how easy it is to apply and what is the important uh, moment, how to do it in the easiest way, what are the possibilities and later we are going to look how to customize the final look of the flakes as well. Okay, so um, yeah, the copper, you know, this is so shiny, I know, like, <laughs> so let's have a look. Okay. Okay, that is the right view. I just need to flip the camera correctly. So this is give, giving, giving us the best look. So I prepared some of the elements that we can customize. Some of them are already painted with black gesso. Some of them are not painted at all. I have one with the rust paste and I think this looks really cool. And uh, I have also some things which I customized already, so I will show you that in a moment. And now, uh, well, the most important thing is the flakes are super light, so it's good to keep them in uh, the jar as much as possible. So I have a mat I'm going to use, but um, just, you know, be aware this is not going to be so clean. They may just go everywhere, including my tea. <laughs> so uh, I can see a lot of people joining. We have over 47. So I would love to see some more of the thumbs up before we start. Yes, I don't want to sneeze at all because that would be a disaster. So just let's start with the plain look, how to apply it in the easiest way. So first of all, Let's prepare some elements, right? The material may be different. So I have metal embellishment from the new release. I have plain, unfinished, like straight from the mold taken um, cast. And this is resin, so this is not really, uh, not really matte finish. I have HDF element. And then I've got uh, another mechanical. So when you start with these elements, first of all, check if they are matte or not. On these metals, it's kind of easy to go right away. You don't really have to put gesso, but for your own safety and to make work easier, you can always put a coat of the primer first. So if you are not sure, if you are just doing that for the first time, I would say play safe and take, take a brush and just add a little bit of the gesso on the top and dry it. In the worst case, it's just not going to make any difference, right? So, which is not true, it's always go, get doing that better. So I'm using clear gesso because the color doesn't matter really. Sometimes, well, when we, when we go with imperfect covering, like inside here, then you will pick the color of the gesso that goes with that. But when we plan full coverage, it is maybe white, it may be clear, it may be black. Yeah, I know I'm going to have them in my tea. I will take the tea away before it's too late. I've been there and done that already. <laughs> Luckily, they are not... Uh, toxic like this is just metal so it's not going to do any harm it's just going to go through your body and you know I'm not saying what is going to happen later I guess you can imagine I will just give it 
a bit of the primer because I have it here anyway, so why not? So here we go. I've got some embellishments. I've got some mold made elements. Right. We've got HDF. Maybe I can get like one big element for you to see. Well, this is not perfect because I was gluing something on it, but this may also work. This is the big cog. We can play with that as well if we want. So this is the first step and I wouldn't really skip it. Of course, sometimes you will get very good results. And of course, if you're going to work directly on the paper, you don't have to do it. But here we are talking about different findings, different elements that you may have on your mixed media project. So, you know, safer is better. HDF is a keyboard, but thicker. Uh, let's look, right? This would be HDF. And I have keyboard as well, but I'm not going to prime it. I will just show you the proportion. Yeah, so you can see keyboard is made of paper. And HDF is like um, com uh, compressed and um, processed wooden compound. Okay. So. Oh, I forgot the water. So now we dry it with the heat gun. Kotku, podaj mi ten wodę z zlewu w naczyniu jakimś. We dry it, so it's not going to be wet. We don't wet. We don't want wet. We want to have it done and ready. So drying the gesso. As you can see, it dries really quickly. Here it's done already. Here it's almost done as well. Thank you. So I have them primed just in case if I want to try on them, no problem. Next step is that you need something sticky. And when I mean sticky, it has to be sticky after drying so the flake can stick to it. And the dedicated product that we have for this uh, for this um, flakes metallic flakes it is called gilding glue so the glue that is uh, supposed to be used together with them to make the best effects and uh, to get the best results it is transparent glue which is tacky after drying okay and if you're going to get it then use the full instruction here written so you don't really have to worry about like i don't remember what to do i highly recommend reading the instructions if in in case if you're doing that for the first time or you just forgot okay so then you need a container for the glue again it may be anything small portion would be needed I have like a little tray here. You squeeze it out and you take a brush. And then of course, it all depends on how much you want to get covered. Just the glue. So now, the most important thing is you have to wait a little bit between application and putting the uh, flakes on the top. So I take the brush, which is not too pretty. I will take this big primed uh, element, this one, and then let's compare what happens, okay? I will try to work on these four for you. So you will see. And then you paint it with the glue. 
This one is primed with clear gesso, resin. This one is HDF. So I'm trying to go everywhere, of course, but some imperfections may be fixed later as well. Here we have on the black gesso. And I will do it here in some parts. So maybe a bit of the petals, a little bit more grungy way to see what happens. What kind of result I can get. Yeah, I'm going to use it on the keyboard as well in a moment. I just can't do so quickly because if I have so many, it may just dry too quickly and I won't be able to do everything. If that makes sense, I will do it on the keyboard in a moment. Then I put it on the side. I can already start to feel the glue is very sticky. Kaitek. Okay. And now you dry it for a moment. You can do it with the heat gun. And you dry it until you feel this is not wet. So, especially on this black, you can see the glue turns transparent. And this will be the right moment. It, if it, it's not white anymore, right? Here you can see it is not white anymore. So this is literally a minute or two and it's ready for application. So if you are not sure, you can just check if it's sticky. Yeah, it is sticky. Believe me, it is. I will try to put it in the on the side so I will have better control over the flakes. Yeah. I put it on the paper towel. <laughs> yeah. So we will do more of the experiments in the next stage. Now let's do like the, to see what happens. And now, again, try to clean your fingers so you're, you're not sticking to the flakes, I'm trying to remove this glue <laughs> as much as I can. Not so easy. Let's go with, let's say, silver and gold mix for first element. Now, this is the moment when you don't sneeze. And you start sticking them on the top. And that takes some time. Some people prefer to use tweezers. I don't think I have tweezers that would work. So I just try to be delicate and to press it with my fingers, not touching the glue too much, just pressing the pieces on the top. Some of the flakes will be bigger. Some of them, as you can see, this one is really big. Okay, so you can start with them, like here, this one, oh, looks like quite luscious <laughs> hairstyle. And then, of course, you continue until you don't see the natural background of it. When you have a mix of the flakes, you get more like a patchy effect. When you have one color, of course, it's going to be just single color effect quite nice as well once you feel it is covered you press it with your fingers let it sit for a moment 
Now we can continue on this one. Again, trying to find maybe bigger pieces to start with, but in the end doesn't matter. It's so thin, it's going to work anyway. I want to add some gold, so this is not all silver. I'm trying not to breathe too heavily. This is good advice from one of us. If you cornstarch your fingers there, it's not going to be so sticky. I, I have beautiful uh, nail art on one of my nails already. Honestly, I don't care that much about that, but I don't have any day job where people will look at my hands. So I just wash them mercilessly and you just, you know, no mercy. I just wash, wash, and then I scrub. And in the end, it's going to be okay. Okay, so let's change the color now. Let's do the black one maybe in hmm, gold. Let's do gold. I hope it's in the center. No, c jumping cuts are not going to be a good idea when you're working with flakes. I'm afraid that may be the beginning of the big disaster. So you can let them sit for a moment so they really stick nicely, right? You don't really uh, try to wrap them off right away. Give them a second so they will stick. And you can see this stays tacky even for longer moment so I'm able to work on two or three at the same time it's not like I have to go quickly because this glue is going to be dry in a moment so that helps you have some working time and of course perfection is hard to get but Honestly, with most of the mixed media projects, perfection is not really important factor anyway. Just saying that some people are trying to be super perfect with everything. Well, in fact, it's just putting too much pressure on yourself. You should just enjoy, have fun. Try to press it in here. In the jaw and inside of the eyes maybe the nose so with the school I did it before I noticed like the biggest mm, challenges are the nose holes and the eyes so sometimes it's just easier to press it as much as you can and then simply come and reapply because there may be not enough glue. When you paint, you think you were painting inside, but in fact, you didn't. So don't worry, I will show you that you can do the retouch. Okay, oh, this one is not perfect. And then let's see what we can do on the flower. Okay, so they're just sitting there breathing, waiting for the better moment. And now the flower. Maybe let's add some copper. Again, trying to get rid of the metallic flake. Copper. These are quite big flakes here, which is oh, really big. So let's press and we'll see what happens. We're not going for the full coverage here. Whoa, this is mega big. We just want to get some cool results so it does look a bit 
more metallic it's not just patina it has some touches to it So basically just give it a chance to stick to it and see what happens. And in the meantime, we can work on the one that you were asking about, so the keyboard. I close it here. I have the glue still uh, on my plate, the same gilding glue and the chipboard. Yep, so let's take the mat. Paint the chipboard the same way. So you take the portion of the glue And you put one coat of the glue on the top. <laughs> flakes are everywhere. Hmm. Not just the flakes. Other things are sticking to me as well. So before I will dry it because it is paper, I will lift it and I will move it into other place. <laughs> And I remove the excess of the glue. Hello, hello. And then <clears throat> I, I took the heat gun, which is the l l least blowing one I may have at home. So we are not triggering the disaster. Okay, so we wait for the moment when our flakes are going to be, sorry, the flakes, the glue is going to be transparent. It is almost transparent now. Maybe let's do silver. We don't have silver yet. So you can see the glue is turning transparent, right? So... This is the time. We can just go, pick up the flakes, and start the application. Open, open, open as much as we can, yeah. Uh-huh, my cut is coming. This is not good. I will have to have my eyes around my head now. So again, you try to feel as much of your keyboard with this flake as possible. Pressing and Sticking that to the glue. Well, it just kind of. <laughs> this is this messy part, of course. Oh, this is a big one. Look at that. Well, just a bit of leaf here left. almost there yeah the look is worth it like some people wonder why would you do it it's so messy but honestly this shine is hard to compare this is like aluminium foil right away straight aluminium foil look so it's not possible to get that with any water-based product let's put it on the side to breathe and in the meantime, we'll be uh, looking at our first samples. So now, the easiest way to 
make sure we are getting that done nicely. It's to take a brush which is dry and then brush it off. You start brushing it off, trying to press and to see if there may be any places that you missed. I was not really worried about the edges, but looks like I missed one spot here. Done. Okay, let's have a look at the small school. Oh, I missed a little spot on the side. And then of course, there's a bit of imperfection inside of the eyes. If it's bothering you, you can do, you can repeat the steps. Yeah. Now let's have a look at the big one. This one is with a black dress, so you can see the imperfections a little bit better. Like this and finally our flower experiment I will brush it off the um, over the bin first because this is a lot of flake But I think it does look pretty amazing. I'm just trying to brush off all the pieces of the flake which are not glued to the uh, embellishment. So it has some really cool patches now. I could put a little bit less but Next time. It's under the petals as well, so I'm <laughs> I'm going under the petals because this is where they sit. Yeah, so this is ultra shiny and uh, well even if you're going to work with the uh, acrylic paints which are metallic the shine is not going to be the same because this is real flake so it makes a difference but uh, it is just the effect which comes from the flakes and now we are going to go with more creative ideas what else you can do with the flakes? Because this is just how to apply them. Now we're going to check the chipboard. I'm trying to clean off. You can see when you give it a moment to sit, so everything is sticky. It's not hard to remove the excess of the um, foil. And also by brushing, you're pressing it down so it sticks even better in the places where it was not completely glued down, you're helping it to stay as well. Try to go in all the empty spaces. I like this.
So that was the basic application, just straight from the jar. You put it on the top of the glue when the glue is uh, half dry and tacky. Oh, I missed a spot here. And then uh, you can just wait a tiny bit and you brush off the excess. That was easy, I hope. So now I will show you, if you find a mistake, how easy it is to make a retouch. So let's take another clean piece of um, towel. Let's say I found imperfection here and here and inside of the eyes. I still have the same glue and it's still okay. So I don't really have to take more. You apply in the place that is a problem. And here we will try to go inside of the eyes because you know that was the part of course with the black it is nice natural shadow but this is a great excuse to show you that it is possible to do it one on the top of another okay oh well maybe a little bit more because i think i just made it to yeah, stingy. Okay. Again, the same thing. Tiny bit of drying. You know, this is for people who would like to have it completely perfect. So, I'm not that kind of person, but I absolutely understand that some people are and they need to have it done right. fixed. I close that one and now we add the gold on the school. Yeah, this one is fixed as well. No imperfections. Lovely silver keyboard. And now let's play with this gold. Again, no sneezing. And a bit of patience. You always have extra. Like this is not possible to be very precise with application because these flakes, they just have their own life in mind. They just do whatever they want to do. So you have to let them be. If they want to go that way, okay, whatever. You will see in this jar, there's a lot of flake, so you will have plenty to play with. Okay, I'm trying to go as deep as I can. <laughs> trying to find all the spots they missed at the first time. And then, again, it's a bit fluffy. I like get it. I give it a moment to dry. And in the meantime, I will give you another idea how you can apply the flakes before we're going to customize the look of the flakes, of course. Uh, if you have at home sticky embossing powder, you can use them with sticky embossing powder and of course embossing ink. Right? So this is another option for people who like stamping. Um, I made a trial version, of course, in my journal. And these are the results with the st uh, stamps. So I used one stamp with the text. And you can see the result on the bottom. I used the uh, scissors, 
so you can see they're here and I use the butterfly which is quite intricate here so I think the result is quite cool and then the round stamp like this so how to use it if you have sticky embossing powder and you tried it before you know how to use it but I'm just going to give you a quick uh, drive through like almost like you know quick quick uh, you need to um, use this powder like any other embossing powder so you first you have to use something that is going to be the base so for us embossing ink and um, you take the stamp of your choice let's say the butterfly I'm not master stampings in stamping you know not really good at that I just do it my way and usually it is okay but I know there are some people who are very particular about how you do it then you see this a little bit oily shadow let's take, take the text as well right we see it then we take embossing powder and just as any other embossing powder, we sprinkle that on the stamped area. And then we will have to heat it up. Probably you can use less, but I just usually play safe. Now you can see the powder is sticking to the um, ink and then we can put the leftovers of the sticky embossing powder back to the jar. The one I'm using is probably from Ranger. Then of course we have to heat it, so our flakes will have something to stick to. So we are waiting for the stickiness. And it takes a moment, you just have to wait for the embossing powder to melt. You can see because it's turning glossy. Of course, the more detailed the stamp is, the more likely the effect is not going to be perfect, it's going to be more grungy but it you know all depends what you are going for i just try to make sure everything is melted that should be it we can even check if it's sticky it is and now the same way of application Take your flakes under control and try to stick them on the <laughs> embossing powder. Let's take uh, whatever, let's take copper now. Copper was good one because it had very big flakes in my packaging. Like, wow. I can cover almost the whole stamp with one piece. Wow. So we are playing with that again, trying to find quite flat pieces. And then hoping for the best, of course. The more you're going to do it, the more confidence you're going to get as well. Like, uh-huh. That was apparently too much confidence. Ah, oh, I broke it. 
I broke it. I should not pull it yet. Oh, this part will be imperfect. Of course, when you do it live. Yeah. So we we'll let it sit. In the meantime, we can also experiment if you can use the same technique on the embellishment, just in case. You can use the embossing powder. On one part of the embellishment, we can put this and see what happens. You know, according to all the odds, I think it should work. So we can play with that as well. This is how I did my <laughs> previous page. Let's hope this time I'm successful. I may, I may not be the master to really demo the stamping, unfortunately. Just in case if it doesn't work, please forgive me. It was working. <laughs> okay. You can see it is sticky. And let's use some of the leftovers flying here. Whatever we have vintage. So this is embossing powder on the embellishments. That should give us this nice grungy look. Let it sit. Now we can come back to the, the school that was supposed to be fixed and brush off the excess again. Yeah, you can see the insides are much better. Hello, hello to everybody joining. Thank you so much. Don't forget to share it with your friends so they can learn. So they know how to use the flakes in the future. You never know what may be useful. See? Very good result. This one is sitting. Let's try to see how my stamping went this time. Just to show you without cheating, this was just moments before. So with my good luck, maybe it's going to be fine as well. Okay, it's coming. Yeah, and now the poor butterfly I was a little bit too quick with. Yeah, see? <laughs> I pulled it up and I... Ah. So you have to be careful, don't pull it too early. So it has the chance to stick. Apparently the embossing powder is not as sticky as the glue. So you just let it sit for a moment, touch it from the top. Don't lift it like I did, because this is what happens. Punishment for being impatient. Yeah, just to compare. This is the result with the color mix of gold and copper. So sticky embossing powder works as well. And of course, if you have it at home, you can play with these techniques. I wouldn't say this is going to be super perfect because it all depends on the stamp you are using and how precise you are and you know how the things go. But uh, once, you know, if you have it on your table, why not experimenting and trying to check how far you can go with that idea. Uh, surely it's great technique for art journaling or card making. 
and this is another way of using your flakes. Here we've got the same sticky embossing powder and our metal embellishment. Pretty cool result. So you can do it this way as well. And now it would be good to know what else you can do once you have it here. Um, I just wanted to make experiment if we can uh, put it on the rust paste. I didn't try it yet, but this is my plan. And I will show you that you can use some, prother, some other products on the top to change the look of the metal flake. So I take my journal away, I bring them up. And let's experiment, okay? I have this one here. And this one. Have you got any questions with that so far? It was embossing ink and powder. So you need sticky embossing powder. There is product like that on the market. And embossing ink of any kind, I have apparently set from Ranger. So you use it like any other embossing powder. I was just showing that moments ago. And um, then you sprinkle that, you heat it up and it remains sticky. So when it is sticky, you can put the foil on the top and that's why you can use your uh, stamping techniques together with the metallic flakes. So this is really cool thing to do, especially if you love stamping, this may be really fun technique to add to your projects, right? So I'm just saying. So um, we tested that, it does work, it's really cool. Just again, I will show you again the, um, the effect, sorry. Oh, yeah, this was, I lifted too quickly, so it was not perfect. But this is with the text, and this text is not too um, big. I have the stamp here, right? So it's quite small letters. You can read them, so this is a great result. And the butterfly and scissors. It has a little bit of the grungy feeling to it because it's not the same effect as you would get with the metallic uh, embossing powder. But it's good to know it works this way, right? So now, first of all, there are moments when you feel like, I like it, but I wish it was not so shiny. So what can I do? And the easiest solution is to take clear gesso and matte it, and it's going to turn matte. So remember, <laughs> this is just like real metal, and this real metal, it is possible to prime. <laughs> So that means you are going to use your gesso on the top, and I mean clear gesso, just to make that shine a little bit more dull, okay? So I take clear gesso and we're going to use it on this skull here. So you will be able to compare to these ones. Yeah, and I will do the top of this bird score as well not the bottom the top clear gesso it's the medium that is primer and it's drying matte so of course this is one of the options you can just you know use that for your advantage if you think that was too shiny you wanted something more matte you can go with that right away i will show you the effect so you will compare this is permanent effect so if you feel like okay i did too much or you would like to have part very shiny and part more matte this is how you do it yeah this is dry and this is matte finish comparing to shiny Sometimes you just need that, you know, like part that would be matte, part would be metallic, right? So this is like the easiest thing you can do to remove that effect. The next question was, can you use the waxes on the top? Yes, you can. And 
that would be a good example. Let's, for example, try to add a um, patina effect on the top of this. So I have uh, sage leaves. This is not bad green color. This is matte wax, so it's going to be even more visible. I put it on my shiny palette. So, you know, from metallic flakes, I have shiny palette. As you can see, this is green. Right, and then, of course, you can put it on the gesso. That is not a surprise. But you can also put it easily on the parts without the gesso. For example, with the matte finish, and there is one example here I made before. This is with the matte finish. There was no gesso here. I'm just putting now wax everywhere so you can see how that works. Matte wax on the top. And of course, the more layers you put, the more saturated full cover you get. So this is one more thing you can do. You can play like that and you can get great results. Yes, you can put alcohol ink on top. Of course you can. Can you stamp with the glue instead and uh, get good results? Uh, I guess you can. I will... <sighs> I would be really afraid because this is so sticky that will never come off your your stamp. So I would be very careful. Just saying. And uh, just to say, take a metallic wax, just to, you know, compare. I would say, no, gold on gold is not a good idea. Let's take something that is going to be visible. Maybe oh. rose gold. Okay, rose gold will be more visible on gold. So metallic without any primer, just going directly. You can give like a nice metallic shine. And even wax <laughs> seems to be less shiny than the metal flake. So you can compare this part is not going to be so, so shiny anymore. Like it is, of course, it is shiny, but it's different metallic. This is like really, really super, super shiny. And um, another idea, what you can do on the top, you can use liquid acrylics. So, for example, let's add some rusty touches to it. I'm taking carmine and tiger orange. You can use it without any primer. It does work. It's just a matter of drying it on the top nicely. Yes. Uh, well, it is better when you want, uh, because yes, they are real metal, very, very thin real metal. So it's better to use them when you want this really extreme shine. It's just different look. And it really is nice for the effects such as background. So you can create effects in the backgrounds as well. Uh, so, you know, you can just use the glue in the selected part of the background and then get really cool results as well. It's just different feeling. And it's hard to compare uh, because this is so like, two levels more of shiny. Okay, I just use the water to make it flow. So it's going to be really, really runny and it's going to go into details and I dry it directly on it. So this is not like they have to stay this way. You can customize them. This is what I did here. I just dried my um, 
e-liquid acrylics on the top and this seems to be quite permanent finish. They're not coming off, nothing is happening. I just need to dry patiently. You can of course experiment and when it's like too much you can remove. No, it's already too late. I took, <laughs> I was waiting too long. What is good in this combination, it is liquid acrylics are glossy and this is very shiny. So you get shiny with the extra color in it. So the metal flakes can be used as a background in a journal also. Yeah, of course they can. I'm going to show you that in a moment. That's very hot. Okay. How cool is that? Permanent. Like probably if I will try to scratch with my nail, it will finally start to come off. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise it's just because... You know, I'm just scratching off the flake. <laughs> Let's fix it because it is so pretty here. I don't want to see it. Yeah. So this is the result with the liquid acrylics. And I guess the result with the alcohol inks would look very similar because this is generally similar concept of application. So pff, I would say, why not? Uh, you can see here the rose gold got a little bit of that color by accident as well. And then we wanted to check two things. You wanted to see if the background is possible to do. I have some started with the tissue paper. And I've got here the one with the rust paste. So we want to see how it works on rust paste. Now I have to refill the glue, I guess. Yeah, you know, it, the flake is just one of the very, very shiny things. Like, they are great for focal points of the composition, something that has to be really visible. Like, you know, look how shiny this one is. And now imagine that some parts of that are colored with liquid acrylics or alcohol inks. That would be amazing. And you can go, you know, far <laughs> further than just going with the flakes and leave it and because you know it is done it's proclamated as finished i would say you should experiment and see what happens and these experiments i did for you already in the past so i can tell you this works and now that's not a lot of problem yeah that's a very good combination with the liquid acrylics really it's shiny too shiny i'm adding a little bit of the glue because now i would like to get some cool results for example uh, covering like sides of the background you know like free hand effect with the glue so some parts of the background are going to be with the flakes now the problem is to remember where I put it Okay, I think I know. Then, again, remember about drying. Look how cold this one is. Look. Mm -hmm. So again, this drying, it just depends how wet your um, glue is, right? So you don't have to dry for too long. This is a very good quality glue. Like we picked the one that was the best, the best formula and that would make your life the easiest. So you don't have to experiment with other art mediums. If you want to have great result, you can get um, this very quickly, you know, with the uh, gilding glue. But of course, it is not always possible to um, 
find the product. So you can experiment with other glues which are going to be similar, but remember they have to be tacky after drying. This is the key. to the great application results. Because if it's not, then the flake is not going to stick. I think that is kind of like logical thing, but this tackiness is super important. Okay, so we just now spread it and we put more or less everywhere. You can see the flake goes a really long way. And you don't have to cover the whole glue. Sooner or later, this is going to dry anyway. Just, you know, try something to create cool result. Okay, that should be enough. And again, give it a moment to rest. So it's going to stick. And now we will experiment and try to put a bit of that metallic on the rust to see how it's going to go together. This is texture, so um, it's not going to be so perfect. And what and which glue is it again? Again? Again. Gilding glue. This is the glue which is formulated to work with the flake. So it is thick, it's transparent, and it has this tackiness when it starts to dry. Gilding glue. Art Extravagance Gilding Glue bottle. Instruction on the packaging as well. So now, let's look at the options here. Let's try to do it on half. So it looks like part is rusty, part it is not. I never tried it yet. I just made that school yesterday, so we'll see what happens. You are together with me <laughs> in this process. <laughs> we will discover. I think it should work. It's just going to be uh, maybe a little bit more patchy and grungy than on the flat surface, but maybe let's do combination of the silver and gold drying. This was matte finish, so I didn't put gesso, right? It was already matte and I am sure it is going to be uh, easy to stick the glue to it. But if you're working directly on the, you know, plastic, glass, fresh metal, like, you know, without any rust on the top of it, um, wood or anything else, it's always better to start with gesso. This is what I said in the very beginning, if you didn't know, watch that part uh, it's always good here the paste is doing the job anyway so let's wait for this to cool down and see what happens quite cool <laughs> yeah so application is easy now we're just experimenting with different effects we get with that application so once you have the good glue so this one I really can recommend. This is really the one that we tested. Um, you can play, you can try to get the results and really the surfaces doesn't matter that much. It may be chipboard, it may be HDF, it may be canvas, it may be paper. You know, we even try with stamping. So there's a lot of fun going on. And then again, we try to do our best with sticking. Yeah, it 
sticks quite well, so I think the result is going to be very, very nice. I said that with the deep satisfaction, of course. And then we can even <laughs> add extra touches with rust, so it's going to be even better. Of course, we are going to do that. <laughs> I know the packaging says gliding glue. I know, but there's nothing I can do about it. It's too late. It, it was printed, it was released, and then I saw it. So the first batch you have to accept it. However, in the packaging description, <laughs> it is correct. Gilding glue. <laughs> Honestly, I don't have it everywhere around my studio. It's only here. I don't have it that far as you think. So don't worry. Yeah, I think it's like a, you know, collectioner, uh, addition for collectioners. Like if you're a collector of this kind of stuff, a collector's item, you can keep that packaging because it's uh, going to be changed in the future. No, not, not gilding. It's gilding. Gilding. G-I-L-D-I-N. But I can't promise it is listed like that on Prima website. They could just list it as gliding glue. <laughs> so anyway, it's gilding glue. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it now. It's too late. I wish I could. Believe me, when I saw that, I had almost like heart attack. I'm trying to be... <laughs> yeah, so now I'm going to brush off the excess of this to, so, so you can see the result on the canvas. I just do it over my rubbish bin, okay? So... <clears throat> I don't have the flakes everywhere. Voila. So we have some quite cool effect. And now, if you want, you can play more and you can combine it with paint as we did on the... Oh, come on. I think this color doesn't want to be used. Uh, combine it with paint just like we did on the school. This is deep turquoise. We can add a bit of burnt sienna. Yeah, I know. Believe me, this was not a fun moment in my life when we discovered that here. <clears throat> Yeah, well, gliding would be cool. I just wonder, people who were making the packaging, they didn't see it, of course, because this word exists. <laughs> but, um, you would think, but... Let's see what happens with the water, water, water. Just for example, you know, what you can do to customize it, to make the result more cool, more interesting. And you should see how many times I got the message asking, do you know the Packaging says gliding glue. Believe me, I did many times. And every time I want to disappear. Yeah, you will find it without a problem. There's only one. <laughs> so this is the one. 
It's not going to be like this one which is called gliding and one which is called gilding. It's the same product. And we only released one glue uh, for this purpose, so... Really, it will work. Okay, let's dry. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. This is the power of mixed media, right? Why not doing that? It's very cool background technique for journal, for canvas. See, it gets dry quite quickly as well. And of course you can pick up a little bit if it's too much so you can reveal more of the shiny effect and the thing is because you're doing that with the acrylic paints which are transparent you can see the shine through the paint so liquid acrylics are really doing the great job because they give you like a color on the top but you see this is metallic under and once they are dry like this they are permanent as well So, of course, you can use it as a background in your journal. Writing on the top of that may not be easy, though, because this is kind of slippery surface, but it gives you wonderful results when it comes to visual side of it. You can do the same with the alcohol inks as well. I'm just trying to make sure I dry everything so it has the chance to stick. Okay, that should be this corner only. So this is ultra shine. There's no paint that would give you this result. So if you are into this kind of look, this is something that you may be interested in. Yeah, so you can see how this is catching the light. Even under the paint, you still get really cool results. So look at that. Yes, clear gesso on the top is going to allow you to write. However, remember what is going to happen to the flake. Uh, it's going to turn matte. Right, so remember only do a bit of this clear gesso in the parts that is uh, going to be, you know, for writing. So you don't lose too much of the shine. Clear gesso is matte finish. So unfortunately, most of the glossy things, they're not easy to write on. So that's why I would say that is beautiful, but maybe not so great for art journaling to write. Uh, on uh, right away, like the surface to use with your pen. Yeah, of course they will stick to it because they are kind of sticky paints and they're very saturated. So you'd only take a little bit. Thank you. I just wanted you to be excited about the flakes because I'm excited myself. And now we can check the final check with the rust, right? So what happened with the rust? Let's see, I have the same brush, so I will try to brush it off. Yeah, as I predicted, the, it sticks nicely and the effect is more grungy because of the under texture. If you rub a lot, it still stays very well. Here's like one spot for some reason, maybe what wasn't covered with the glue. But that looks cool. I would say very, very cool result. But now I'm going to make it even cooler. I think. Because I'm going to add a tiny bit of the rust paste to finish that up.
because now we have this sharp line between what is rusty and what is metal. So now let's try to get rid of that line with a tiny bit of the paste and that should work really well. Water is going to help as well, just saying. I'm trying to blend it in for you a little bit. So I'm going to add the paste and I'm going to add the water. Oh, it's almost empty, the sprayer. This one is okay. Hmm, yeah, just as I thought. Absolutely cool. So you not only have the way to apply the flakes, but what you can do on the top of the flakes. So you can play an experiment. Of course, the paste is going to dry much, so we are, we are going to have this gradation of the rust turning, you know, into the metal and metal into rust. And that's going to be really, really fun especially when you have larger spaces to play on uh, on them and you can compare the look with the acrylic and the rust paste it's completely different yeah that should be enough yeah the flakes are very versatile like most of the things I have in the line that you can use in many ways. Look at that. So that just blurred that line beautifully and the rust is going nicely into the metal. So there are some parts when you have like the burr color of the metal and that's super cool. And then there's like the transition part. So it's half matte, half, half shiny, half, well, no, you, you don't have halves. A bit shiny, a bit matte, and a bit rusty. <laughs> and the same here as well, look. Very nice results. So, uh, we tested some of the finishes. Waxes work. Yeah, it's like old coin look, exactly. The waxes work really well. They give you this nice matte finish. Clear gesso is going to work uh, nicely as a matting agent. And then you can see liquid acrylics, they're adding color to it, transparent color. And then you can combine it with the rust paste, of course, the same with patina paste. And you can apply it on any surface you like. So they are really cool. <laughs> Just think about the possibilities on what you can make on your canvases, on your journal pages. I hope you are going to be inspired and you're going to play with them a lot because there's a lot of flake in the jar. So you can easily, easily go with a lot of ideas. Those flakes are really neat. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy you like it. I'm just going to check if you have any questions because this was uh, what I planned to show you today. So we have a lot of different results. <laughs> Mostly the schools, but why not? And remember about the idea with uh, the sticky embossing powder if you have at home because this is another way of using your stash. If you have it, if you like stamping, sticky, embossing powder is your good friend and it's going to help you. Even on the embellishments, you can use it. The size of the jar is uh, 150 milliliters. So it is a little bit smaller than the jar of gesso, but it's bigger than the jar of the pastes. So there's a lot of flake inside. Yeah, they will last for a long time. No worries. You know, it's you can see how much 
we applied this flake is so tight so thin you can just pack so much in the jar easily I didn't see that on my work yet. I would have to wait, I guess. But probably I will have to wait for a long time. I didn't test it this way, but this oxidation would be really cool. <laughs> I would be happy to get it. You know, usually they are hidden somewhere in the journal or together with other paints. So I would have to wait a long time until it will happen because it probably takes years but it's a really interesting perspective to see if it's going to happen one time if you have oh, just giving me more space <laughs> if you have any questions about it you can also leave them in the comment uh, below I will come back to that video later and for people who are uh, you know not so fluent with English in a day or two, there will be automatically added subtitles. The YouTube does this translation and, you know, this uh, description. So that should be easier to follow as well. <laughs> I'm, you know, the, almost immediately. Okay, so, so far I didn't see any. So I will be waiting to see if it happens because so far I've seen projects done with these flakes and I have some elements decorated with these flakes and there is no oxidation. I have to add it myself. Fake. <laughs> Fake oxidation. <laughs> but it looks convincing. So thank you very much for watching and please if you know somebody who would like to see this video so they would like to learn the techniques or maybe your favorite shop will need some help with selling the flakes and they would like to get a tutorial how to use it give them the link because i do it for you this is for you to you know explore the possibilities to see what you can do with that product to you know get inspired and that would be just perfect if that can go far far in the world so if you can please like the video so it is going to go a little bit more viral and people will learn the techniques and they will get uh, new ideas on using the things they have at home as well so that would be very very cool and i, I will be watching my uh, copper flakes to see if they're doing it i'm not sure if it's real copper i think it's aluminium but it's colored aluminium but it will be really cool honestly thank you very much share that video on facebook if you can share it wherever you want to and it's going to help me a lot to uh, get this information to the people so they will see um the problem is I get the questions quite often. People don't uh, look for the sources, like they, they don't go to YouTube, they don't type the questions in Google and then they just ask right, you know, directly to the people and the answers are there. So let's help the answers get to the people who may be interested. I'm glad you are inspired. Thank you very much because uh, you know, this is something that um, I think will bring a lot of cool effects to many projects. And sometimes you just want this super, super shiny effect instead of um, just metallic paint. Of course, metallic paint is cool, but uh, it is like two times more shiny or three times more shiny. So if you want that, if you really feel you want something that's almost like mirror, reflecting the light <laughs> that would be the best technique to get that result thank you very much thank you for watching share the video be nice don't be uh, this kind of person who hides the things for yourself and i will try to post it of course in my social media as well thank you have a wonderful weekend and uh, see you soon hopefully uh, check my Instagram account, please. We have two. One is Finavar, and that is me. Please follow. 
and the other one is Fin of our studio and this is Fin of our brand and we show the projects from my design team, from me and from our fans as well. So please follow and tag us so we can use your project as well. If you'd like to be featured, you have to tag so we can find you. Okay, thank you very much. Have a wonderful rest of the day or the evening. And um, I hope, you know, I hope you're going to experiment. Now I have to find where my alcohol inks are and to see if it's going to be big difference between uh, liquid acrylics and alcohol inks. I think there may be slight difference, but um, I don't know yet. I have to find them there somewhere in my studio. So now I'm tempted to check. Thank you. Bye bye. Love you all. <laughs> Thanks. Finish, 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 finish.